It's finished Maidenhead uh, United nil, uh, Altrincham uh, nil. Uh, game with a few chances, Phil, but at a good point, would you say? Absolutely. Uh, one thing we've certainly had to come to terms with in this division is a point on the road is a good point, and, and beating them at our place, four points. You're certainly happy with that return. There's always going to be a tricky one because I don't think they've scored against us and they haven't beat us yet. So there's always that air of, is it going to be their day? And they've, they've had a good run of form. So yeah, I was, I was delighted to pick up the point today. Obviously, the, the, the big news pre-match was the unavailability of uh, Tony Thompson and, 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 uh, and Stephen Drench coming in. What can you tell us about the situation with Tony? Yeah, Tony got rushed into hospital this morning. I'm, I'm still not quite sure the extent of the, he's, he's got an infection basically. Um, and until I speak to him again, I'm not quite sure who he is. He, he, he's not very well, so we need to hang fire and see how he's going. But we put a lot of countermeasures in, in place for the absence of Tomo. One of the reasons bringing Drenchy in and, and allowing Matt Gould to go out on loan was Matt to keep ticking over and be ready if needed. And uh, Drenchy's a very experienced, very established goalie who's trains with the lads and we knew if, if needed and if called upon could do what he did today. And, and did you have any concerns about the fact that he's not obviously not played a, a competitive game for a couple of years? You know, it's, it's not ideal, but obviously it's one of those necessities things. Was that a worry or did you... No, you no, concerns? like I said, with the countermeasures we put in place is uh, when we've arranged friendly matches, when I say friendly matches, sort of in-house games, he's always played. So when you say he's not played for years, yeah, the competitive side in terms of at this level, but he's, he certainly played enough times for Farsley before he came back to us. So, yeah, it was never a concern, really. And in the end, it wasn't really an issue. He had one save to make early on in the, in the first half and after that, had, had, had very little to do. So that, I suppose, tells you how well we defended throughout the game, I guess. Absolutely. I think that's what we've done really well. Last two games, uh, two clean sheets. I'm not sure if that's uh, a first for us at this level from last season and this one. Um, so that's good to see. And the new players that we brought in, again, everybody was probably looking at it last week, thinking how well they did. For me, the acid test was, could they do it again? Um, and they, they certainly have, they, they've, they've flourished under the pressure that they've been under of coming in and, and trying to find the feet at a very tough level. Um, it, it felt as if the first 15 minutes or so they had a, a good spell, but then in the, in the, the next half an hour of that first half we were, we were on top and, and we, it looked like something was going to come, the chances were going to come. Is there a bit of disappointment that we've, we've maybe not made their goalkeeper make, make too many saves uh, in that first half and maybe throughout the game? Yeah, you're right, but bigger teams, uh, stronger teams than us and come here and got absolutely nothing. So they're good at what they do, they're hard to break down. Um, they've certainly improved since we last played them. Uh, he's, he's had a lot of injuries, this very similar to ourselves. Completely contrasting styles of play. Unfortunately, we had to sacrifice a lot of finesse today for physicality. But we're in that position where we need to make those decisions maybe when um, we can get a little bit more safer, we can be a bit more expansive again. But at the moment, we've got to do what it takes at the business time of the season to make sure that we achieve our goals, which is to stay in this division. Um, you talked about the uh, after the win against Dagenham and Redbridge last <laughs> week as if maybe the result was maybe a little bit better than the, the performance. I wondered if there was an element of, uh, of it being the other way around a little bit this week in terms of as the second half went on, it was a bit like with the first half. We grew into the game, we got stronger and we looked like the side more likely to win it if anyone was going to in that second half, did you feel? Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, Maidenhead, 4-4-2, uh, very direct team. They want to get in the lead and they want to defend the lead. That's why I think they play the way they do up and down the bank. We knew if we could keep them at bay, we, we give ourselves a great chance of uh, getting a goal and when we get a goal we, we, we thought we could have got a couple more but we never really did enough for me to to get that foothold in the game and as you said we're at the keeper Ryan's had a moment of magic where I really don't know how we saved it I don't think he knows a lot about it himself Dan he used to have Dan at Nantwich when he played for Stoke City and he made an unbelievable save uh, and again I, I think if it's not a keeper of that stature and size he probably does he used his frame brilliantly just to get something on it but that could have been the deciding factor, a moment of quality from someone like Ryan, and that's what you need, but it didn't quite go in today. No, and uh, 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 also as it went on, there were a few moments of, it felt like a, mostly a sort of, uh, 
you know, a, a good spirited game, but then there were a few moments of uh, yellow cars started flying around. There were, it felt like we slightly maybe even in the lost our composure a little bit. There were a few unnecessary yellow cards. Was that a bit of a concern that things you know, that there might be a red card coming? I, I was slightly surprised that. Um, one of their players didn't get a second yellow card for the one he flew in on uh, and uh, Elliot Osborne. It did feel in the closing stage as if there might be a red card coming. Were you a bit worried about whether it was going to go our way or their way, as it were? Well, Adams, Adams made the tackle, I think it was, on Cosy, which to me, where I wasn't on over the other end of the pitch, looked to red. And then he does it, he, he's late again. I would have been furious for my player if he'd gone in that late again, because that, that was a yellow and he should have gone. Um, unfortunately, the ref didn't give it um, when I say unfortunately because that's what should have happened um, but then yeah we, we did lose our discipline I wasn't happy with some things but that's why I made the subs because the, the subs I made Eddie Jones hasn't done anything wrong but he was on a yellow card they brought on a fresh winger a fresh forward who carries the ball really well you're just wary that he might be sloppy in a tackle and then gets it a silly yellow and then it's two yellows and he's off so that, that was the mindset Dan Mooney was on a yellow and who else come off there there was one more so we had about four yellows at the time so I could only make three subs but it was just trying to make common sense decisions but again you, you need the lads to have an element of discipline but I'd like to think overall where they tried mixing it up with us and trying to try to ruffle the feathers a little bit we didn't succumb to it we did try and play as much as we could in terms of our brand of football but sometimes, I hate to say it, but you've just got to get the job done, and that's what we did today. Final question then, if it was a day when the defences were on top, our back four, a very new back four, uh, I, I thought looked like they'd played together for a lot longer than a couple of games, and, and, and particularly I would say down that left-hand side, Jake Cooper and, uh, and Eddie Jones, Harry Perrett as well, we know Toby Malarkey is a what a good player he is, but um, seeing the signs of them becoming a unit, that must be a real source of encouragement for them. Absolutely, but what we've got to remember is, and this is the bit where I had to keep my composure, was where we had a real tough run of games in terms of the, the fixtures we had. We're playing teams now that we're capable of, of beating and we're capable of being on the same pitch as that's hard to say as an Altrincham manager and an Altrincham fans find that difficult when I do say that, but you're seeing where we are in this division. We're more than capable of competing with 90%, if not more, and on our day, anyone. But when the top, top teams have their days, it becomes very difficult for us. So as frustrating as today is, we're, like I said last week, we've got a lot of new players and we're slightly disappointed we can't put on a better show for the fans because if I come to a game of football, I want to be entertained. I don't just want to watch a slugfest, but we've got to get the results. We've got to stay in this division. So I've got to find a mix and a blend. And where you say in the back, lads, they're all the new players. They've had loads of information. We've probably overdone it with regards showing them where we've gone wrong and what we need to do. Um, I'm working on it in training probably more than we ever have before. And that's probably why you're seeing the clean sheets and sacrificing a little bit of the forward play. But we've got good forwards. And as we've seen last week against Dagenham, we can keep them clean sheets, we give ourselves a great footing in this division to go and get a result, but we will play much better than what you've seen in the last two games. I felt I was a little bit hypercritical actually last week when I watched <laughs> it back. We didn't play quite as, not poorly, but uh, the heights that we can hit, we didn't quite hit them. But we were playing Dagenham and you've got to give them a lot of credit. And today we felt we could have come here and put on a bit of a show, but we've got to remember, we've got to give Maiden Ed a lot of respect because they've beaten, as I said, a lot bigger teams than us at their place. So to take four points off Maiden Ed and give our travelling fans who've travelled such a long way something to be hopeful for going into Tuesday because it sets us up nicely for that now another really big game for us at this part of the season at this end of the table then we'll take a lot of confidence from that result going into Tuesday.